people not from the western world. What's something westerners eat that makes you wonder, why the heck would you eat that? When I was teaching in Korea, the concept of sweet rice pudding tended to really confuse my students. That and Marmite of course. To be fair, Marmite confuses everyone. A family friend from South Africa commented on pumpkin pie once. Wait you put pumpkins into pie. Why would you do that? I had the opposite experience when I AU paired for an American family. I asked if they were going to eat all the pumpkins they bought for decorations after Halloween, like roast them, or make them into soup. They looked at me, like I'd asked if they were going to eat their children. Pumpkin. Soup. They said the decorative pumpkins weren't edible, and the only way Americans eat pumpkin is in pie, and it's sweet. I told them pumpkin soup is so ubiquitous in Australia, literally every cafe in the country has it on the menu in winter. Edit, seems like, from everyone's comments, maybe their reaction was either a regional thing or an ignorance slash lack of interest thing. Now that I recall, the family ate literally two kinds of vegetables the whole year I was there, canned green beans and fresh cucumber. Chinese American here, grew up eating Chinese food at home, but I had enough contact with other Americans to know western food. I remember being baffled in first grade, when a parent brought in a raw veggie platter with dip. I thought you'll eat raw broccoli and cauliflower. Me too, until I went to college, and learned to like raw veggies real quick, or else I was going to wind up with some kind nutritional deficiency haha. <laughs> Gotta love dining halls, slash. When I vacationed in the US, I ate briskets and those other meats that are smoked and or charred, I forgot what it's called but it tastes heavenly, and I miss eating that. Barbecue. I'm a western person, but I lived in a remote jungle village in the south pacific for a few years. I'd always have a tin of milk powder in my bush kitchen for making tea and coffee. My language helper wanted to know why the tin had a cow on it, when it was white powder, and not corned beef, the only cow in a tin she knew of. I explained the origin of milk powder, and how in my country we get it slightly fresher as a liquid and many people drink it. She was totally grossed out that white people love to drink cow breast milk. Living in a remote village with no refrigeration she had never had milk, cheese, yogurt etc so, when I explained how we ferment milk to make those she started gagging. That's amazing lol. I can imagine why she would start gagging, it's an interesting process. I don't even waste a second thought putting milk in my coffee. I love yogurt. Did you tell her about ice cream? Since she was familiar with ice cream from a few trips with me to the main trading town, where I bow her one, and she liked it, I didn't want to ruin it for her. I grew up in Jamaica. When I first came to the UK in 2001, I started school and primary education. Everyone in my class liked fish fingers but no one could convince 7 year old me to eat it, because coming from an island, I know fishes have fin. I love them now though, but I only started eating them about 5 years ago. Also, I had never seen white sugar before. In the Caribbean, we predominantly have brown demerara sugar, and to this day it is still my preferred. Jamaican who came to Canada. I was also surprised by white sugar lol. I'm half American half Indonesian, and grew up in several countries. Didn't move to the other states, New York City specifically, until I was in my 20s. My roommates were trying to figure out American things I had missed out on growing up internationally, and they were blown away that I never had a PB and jelly sandwich. I was hesitant to try it, because it's such an odd combo but man, they made me one, and I was like damn, this is good. Also s'mores was something they introduced me to one summer. I was used to eating cheese on graham crackers, and never thought of it as a vessel for dessert. I have never heard of cheese on graham crackers. Is it cream cheese spread? I usually have a fat slice of brie or camembert on graham crackers. I'd also do a spread like borsin. To me, graham crackers and cheese was a typical snack at home. Steak, but this is coming from someone who grew up buying meat from stores that aren't exactly sanitized, so we have to make sure they're very thoroughly cooked. 
A Japanese colleague of mine was straight up offended when he saw we Brazilians put mashed potatoes and batter to palha, which is like tiny thin potato chips, on our hot dog. I didn't tell him my mom also puts carrots, corn and other vegetables on it, he'd go crazy haha. <laughs> to be fair, after seeing Brazilian pizzas and now reading about mashed potatoes on hot dogs, one would think you guys were taking fat barn rips when cooking. To be honest though, mashed potatoes and mushroom gravy on a hot dog sounds amazing. My mom is from a village in Burma. When my mom and her family moved to Macor, then a Portuguese colony, they were served ham for the first time during the trip. My grandparents thought it was raw meat and the entire family, grandparents and their 10 children, left their ham portions and eaten. My parents are now in their 70s, and just in the last 2-3 years got open minded enough to try medium rare steak. They like it, but still view it as a you will get sick food. My dad developed a cold a week after eating medium rare steak and blamed it on the steak. In the last 2-3 years got open minded enough to try medium rare steak. This is the one that gets me. My wife, Japanese, will eat just about anything raw. I've seen her eat raw chicken, raw liver, raw fish semen. But every time I cook steak, she asks, is it okay to eat it if it's still red in the middle? I just, really? That's the one that gets you? I traveled to the states once, and I was excited to have hash browns considering we were at the source, but they were completely different from what we have at home. Edit, the hash browns I had were from Dennis, but a lot of you have mentioned Waffle House so I'll definitely give it a try when I come back. Something I've found is that hash browns tend to vary a lot depending on where you get them. They're all good, but it seems like each place has their own spin on it. My family's been living in the states for a long while now. My parents don't buy celery that often, unless they are planning to use it for a dish. So, when my parents saw me wash some stalks then take out the peanut butter, they were like. Making ants on a log in class is what helped me like celery as a kid, but I guess it's not a thing in Korea. Or at least for my parents generation, no clue about now. My parents weren't into the celery with peanut butter. Too sweet, they said. But then my mom takes out the mayo and uses it as a dip for the celery. It was my turn to go though it honestly didn't taste as bad as I thought. UK here. Am I the only one who has no idea what ants on a log is? Certainly intrigued though. D it really must be a US thing then. You cut a portion of celery stick, fill the curve of the stick with peanut butter, then line a few raisins on top as ants. It's basically a kid's food craft to get them to eat celery's lol. When I explained this to my parents, I forgot to mention cutting the stalk to smaller portions. So I looked back to see them trying to fill a whole stalk with peanut butter and commenting how messy it is pfft schools. Cheese. When my mom encountered cheese for the first time, she thought it was something that had gone bad. She's from a small village in China, by the way. Well to be fair cheese basically is milk that's been allowed to go bad in a controlled manner. Booze is just rotten sugar water prepared in different ways, but the whole world is basically cool with it. That's because beer is liquid bread and the world was already cool with bread. Hear me out, I'm from Southeast Asia. In our country, avocado is like a fruit dessert, usually, we eat it as it is, or we mix it with powder milk, or better yet we use this to make ice candy. It surprises me a bit that someone is using this as a spread for a sandwich like a tomato. American here. I used to think the best use of avocado was guacamole, but then I had an avocado milkshake from a Vietnamese restaurant. Monte Cristo sandwich. Deep fried ham and cheese sandwich, dusted with powder sugar, served with jam. WTF Americans? Edit, FYI I tried it at Disneyland Blue Bayou as a tourist after lots and lots of online recommendations. To be fair, I thought the same thing before I had one. Same here. I used to work in a restaurant that sold them. They absolutely made me sick when I looked at them. Then, somehow, someone convinced me to take a bite. Now I'm obese. The item itself isn't a specific western thing, but the cooking style is. Ramen noodles. I'm from a southeast Asian country and instant noodles are very common. 
we don't call it ramen either, since ramen technically is a specific type of Japanese noodles. It's odd to me that in western countries it's seen as something to eat, when you are dead broke slash have no other options, and the most important thing is you'll usually eat it plain, or with barely any added ingredients slash seasoning. Where I come from we have instant noodles in a huge variety of flavors, mostly spicy flavors, and we usually add a lot of veg or meat, egg, etc. Many of us, of all ages, also tend to eat it as supper or dinner food, if we are lazy to head out, so it's not just a collard thing. Eat it plain, because you can't afford to put much else in it when you're a broke collard student. I guess just what's the deal with french fries and ranch dressing? It really really depends on the ranch. Not all ranch is created equal, but the good stuff is amazing on seasoned fries. My South African cousin was pretty offended by corn on the cob. That's food for livestock. I feel like even westerners outside of the UK get confused by beans on toast it's so cheap and tasty though. Edit, it appears it's only considered weird in America by some, which is my experience to shouldn't have been so general lol. Overly greasy food. I remember seeing food carnivals that have many deep fried food. Like fried Oreos, fried Snickers bars and other fried food. To be fair a lot of the attraction to food like that is the novelty of it, it's not something I could normally find, maybe twice a year is it available where I live. American. My wife is Chinese, and they did not understand peanut butter, until they had some now every time I go back to China I have to bring some with me. Edit everything below this line. They tried popcorn and even with butter and salt they still did not like it. They also loved hot chocolate in the Texas Roadhouse. And they were amazed at how much free coffee you can get if you wander around town. To be fair most Europeans don't use peanut butter either. All of the exchange students I've known had never had a peanut butter and jelly before which is crazy to an American who grew up on them. I'm Norwegian. And I'm honestly baffled when other Europeans have never heard of things like PB&J, s'mores and other typical American stuff. Like, have you never watched a movie? Or watched a YouTube video? When I found out you are supposed to put sap from some random tree on your perfectly good pancakes. Edit. Also sausages get bad reactions from my family in India when I explain to them what it is. Edit. A lot of people think I don't like maple syrup. I do. I love it it's just the concept of taking sap and making it into something you pour on your pancakes. It's not a random tree, it's a specific one. If it were a random tree then it could and or would be a problem. Do not put poison sumac sap on your pancakes. New Zealand are here. Our former Prime Minister tarnished our name with his spaghetti on pizza, tvnz.co.nz link. He was voted out a few months later, and I'd like to think that this was the tipping point for most of us Kiwis. Germany has something called Met, that is seasoned minced meat. Uncooked, you eat it on bread or half a bun then it is called Metbrigen. Since there is a law specifically for producing and handling any ground beef slash minced meat, raw or cooked, it is safe to eat. The first thing I ever ate when I got off the plane in the USA was a big greasy slab of pepperoni pizza. You gotta understand I eat only fish, pig or some kind of bad with rice beforehand. Seeing that for the first time made my stomach churn till I was encouraged enough to finally take a bite, and holy shit, if I wasn't singing a whole new world with my taste buds after that. Soon after I tried burritos, tacos and nachos, and I within a year was obese. My fiancé was born and raised in Korea, and I got a kick out of sharing my childhood foods with her. One of them was Pop-Tarts. She was so confused why anyone would eat stale breaded crumbs filled with shitty jam or chocolate. Turns out a lot of people think Pop-Tarts are weird. Thank god she loved flaming hot cheetahs though. Pop-Tarts are so classic, but every time I eat them, I realize how much they could be improved. Why not cover the whole thing in icing? I don't get it. I'm ethnically Korean, but I was born and raised in Argentina, with American citizenship. Our family love making Argentina-style BBQ, asado, every weekend. 
I married my very Korean waifu. During the first one year of having a sado, she loved it. But now, she just can't understand how our family loves BBQ slash meat so much. But she just loves having a sado plus kimchi. Best combo ever. Greasy BBQ washing off with the tangy, refreshing kimchi. I'm American and y'all would freak if y'all seen my great grandma's cookbook from the Great Depression. Y'all like some opossum and apple sauce. I've not had a possum, but I've had plenty of squirrel. I bag a few every year to satisfy my odd Appalachian tastes and they are good if fried with cajun seasoning. We all grew up basically eating poor, depression era food in the mountains and hollers. Black pudding from the UK. Pork blood, pork fat and oatmeal. All mushed up into the shape of a hell sausage. No offense but what the fuck. Hey man I just wanted to say that these are the questions I live for. Like god damn it's so wonderful to see everyone talking so god damn candidly about their culture's food. It really made my night. I'm from Southeast Asia. When I was studying in the UK, my ex's mother replaced rice with barley seeds. Where I come from, barley is commonly made into a sweet drink. So I was really perplexed seeing barley on my plate with chicken and broccoli. I took so many photos for my family and friends to see lol. I'm American but had a sublisa roommate in college for a semester who was a grad student from a rural part of China. We lived in CA. When we first met her, it was morning, and I was making toast for breakfast. She looked super confused by the loaf of bread, and asked if it's food. I was like, wait, you've never seen bread? Turns out she had never heard of bread or butter. I made her a slice and she teared up, and said she felt American. She then ate almost exclusively toast for a week. Took her grocery shopping, and showed her all the different types of bread, and we had a little taste test. Sourdough was her favorite, so the San Franciscan was pleased. She made me some of her foods and I definitely stepped one eye outside of my comfort zone, and we had fun. Communicating was a little tough, but good food transcends all language barriers. Not so much the food, but the amount of food. I have small, size of teacup plate, plates and just pick more food, if I'm still hungry. Go to the states and my mind is blown with the enormous plate size not to mention the stacking on the plate and a side serving plate. Went to this Texan BBQ place, and I was only able to finish one third of it, and I felt like I was stuffed to the brim. Was looking around, and was amazed that people were able to finish off the entire thing. There are definitely a lot of people that finish the whole serving, but a lot of people will only eat some of the serving at restaurants, and take the rest home. Very situational though, but basically everywhere low to mid range that would be normal here, at least for me. Slight twist on the question, but in the UK I've seen somewhere sell Philadelphia cheesesteak sandwich that consisted of thin cuts of steak cheddar and Philadelphia cream cheese on a baguette. I've had cheesesteak when traveling to the US and it sure as shit isn't that. OMG. As someone from Philly, this is blasphemous. In our country, a pancake is more like a cripe. And we put other thing in it, and roll it up. I personally don't really know how is the maple syrup and butter can fit on a pancake. But we have a different thinking when it comes to pancake, so that is a reason. It kind of melts into the pancake like if you dip bread into soup. It doesn't sit on top of the pancake, it gets absorbed into it. I find it weird that pancakes are considered as breakfast food it's just cake and sugar and it make more sense to be a dessert. The pancakes themselves don't usually have much sugar in them, but I see your point. I vehemently disagree, but I see it. Fucking Vegemite. After 4 years in Australia I'm a proud convert. Still thinking what the thought process was behind this. Haha, <laughs> I love introducing foreigners to Vegemite. I was showing to this American guy once, and he insisted on making his Vegemite toast, like I had made mine. I grew up on it, and use a lot of Vegemite. Told him he wouldn't like it, and he needed to use less, but he wasn't having it. Surprise surprise, he hated it. You really have to work up to it, hey. How good is Avo and Vegemite toast though? Why would anyone want to eat spray cheese? 
There's something about that radioactive yellow color and the tangy taste of the preservatives that immediately activates the brain's pleasure center. Shoot that shit straight into the back of my throat. Give it to me in and forth. I crave its mysterious pleasures. When I got to America I thought why is there no rice and why are there so much beef bc I only eat fish, rice, veggies, chicken and pig. Why are there so much beef? Because the planes ain't good for raising much else. I had a friend from Vietnam who was disgusted by cereal. He didn't know why adults would not only drink liquid from a cow's udders, but that they would also pour it on crispy wheat slash rice slash corn flakes and eat it. Soggy. With cow boo juice on it. Weird deep fried food. Worked at a food festival and was surprised at all of the booths selling deep fried Aureus, Ferrero Rochers, Snickers, and butter. I remember cringing hard every time someone asked me to direct them to the butter booth. Yeah, most of that stuff is kind of a novelty. They aren't a staple. We have wheat fields, not deep fried butter fields. Edit, we can neither confirm nor deny the existence of deep fried butter fields in the south. Move along. Nothing to see here. SHHH don't let them know about the deep fried butter fields. A friend's Asian mom from Hong Kong said that she had some problems with the concept of cheese. Rotten and fermented milk. Also my dad also from Hong Kong said that crawfish was also looked down upon because it was gathered in mud. But now considering I'm in California and he's still back in Louisiana text me like an asshole pictures of him and my mom eating crawfish at a boil telling me look how delicious they are. I love American style coffee, especially like at a diner. I found Europeans don't appreciate that. Eating at a diner is an experience and it brings back so many different memories for everyone. From being drunk at 3.30 am and just wanting food, to going on those family road trips and just wanting a burger around lunchtime. I wouldn't call diner coffee amazing, and I wouldn't call it awful, but it evokes memories. Diners are the peak of American culture emo. Iskargat. I come from the southern part of India, and I still cannot comprehend how people treat snails as a delicacy. You could cover anything in garlic butter and I'd eat it. 1. Fluff, that marshmallow thing in a jar. And then people eat this with peanut butter for a sandwich? 2. How do Americans shit with their ratio of meat to veggies? It's like one large steak and three small broccoli florets. It would take me few days to get enough fiber to shit this out. 3. Milk. So many lactose intolerant people, yet so many people still drink milk slash eat dairy ice cream. I've had enough of my roommates destroying the toilets I used to drink soy milk, now this new oat milk thing is amazing. Anti American TCK. 2. How do Americans shit with their ratio of meat to veggies? It's like one large steak and three small broccoli florets. It would take me few days to get enough fiber to shit this out. The trick is to have a plunger near the toilet when it finally comes out. I guess some kind of knife would work too but that's rare. Thanks for watching. Do you have something to share? Leave it in the comments. Please like and subscribe for more edit readings. Links mentioned in this video can be found in the description. Have a great day.